What's up guys, JFM here, welcome back. Today I'm going to be doing a guide on all of the brand new redstone features in 0.14.0. Now this is my third guide, I've also done one on witches and maps, so if you'd like to check those out, those are on the channel, but hopefully you guys will enjoy. Quickly before I begin a full disclaimer, I am no redstone master, this is just a beginner tutorial and I don't even know much about this stuff, but I thought I would do my best at explaining it as simple as possible for you folks. Enjoy! This is a completely educational video and I hope that you guys can take away at least something from this, so if this video does turn out to be helpful, be sure to smack that like button below and hopefully we can have a little bit of fun learning about hoppers, comparators, repeaters, and all sorts of new goodies added in this recent update. Let's start off with the hoppers. This, my friends, is a hopper. It's a nice funnel looking thing, and it's a pretty awesome block. It's a really, really useful thing. Um, basically, it, only, it has its own inventory, and we're gonna do exactly what the features are, but um, this is what it looks like, and you can also attach it onto things. You can see the nozzle at the bottom is now facing onto the block. So it's it's, it's got a few different looks to it, but um, this is the basic block. How do you make these hoppers? Well, I'll go ahead and show you. Um, you're going to need a little bit of iron and a few chests. Now, you don't need the iron block, but um, I'm just gonna make this into regular iron. There we are. And now I'll make a few hoppers. So this is the hopper recipe. Um, five iron ingots and one chest and you can make a hopper and you can place it wherever you want to and that is that. Now what do hoppers do? Well they pass items through, kind of like a funnel would. So let's say I put a uh, put a chest underneath this hopper and I put a chest on top of the hopper. If I were to put something inside the chest above the hopper it would shoot down and go into the other chest and that's, ba that's the basic gist of it. So for example, I've got this automatic cooker set up where I have coal going into the furnace and raw chicken going into the furnace. Both of those will combine, the furnace will cook up the chicken, and once the chicken gets popped out, it will go down into the bottom chest with the cooked chicken. So let's try it out and let's see if this thing actually works. So I'll grab a little bit of chicken, a little bit of coal, and we will see exactly how this thing works. So let's first go ahead and place our, oh come on now, <laughs> get in there. There we are. So we'll place our coal in there. As you can see, it's disappearing as soon as I add it in. And then, um, um, we'll go ahead and put our raw chicken in this one. No, just kidding. You actually have to put the chicken on the top. But that should have worked. Yes, there we go. So the chicken is going to be added. Now this one from the side, it's not working. Um, the top has to come in from the top and the bottom has to come in from the sides. At least that, for my experiment there, it works. So I'll go ahead and show you guys if I add, let's say, six more chicken into this chest, it's all gonna disappear fairly fast and it's gonna go into this and we're gonna have a ton more chicken in here. The cooked chicken, once it gets cooked, you guys will see, I'm not actually going to click it. It's just going to disappear straight away and go down into the bottom chest um, through the hopper. So let's go ahead and you go down here. There we are, and there's a cooked chicken. Voila! See, after you grab your chicken, you can chow down and know that you've successfully made a hopper and don't make the same mistake as I did. So there you go, the first hopper mechanism. That is just one of many uses these things have, but we'll go ahead and move on to the next thing, which is repeaters. Now, these are much wider known. Everybody really knows what these do, but if you do not, I'll give you a quick refresher. Uh, basically, they just extend redstone signals. So, for example, this powered redstone is going to go almost all the way to the lamp, uh, but it stops somewhere way around here and it's just not powerful enough to go all the way so what the repeater does is it repeats the signal and gives it a fresh start as if you were to have a torch here and uh, it's gonna extend the signal as far as you want to and uh, there you go that's basically what that does. And now you craft it. Well, uh, these are the ingredients. You're gonna need a bit of smooth stone, a few redstone torches, and some redstone dust. Go ahead and put that all into a crafting table in this formation, and you can make yourself a redstone repeater and place it down. Now, another really cool thing these things uh, actually do is they can add a delay. And as you can see here, there are different settings on the repeater. If you put it all the way to the back, the delay is going to be the longest, and the easiest way to show this would be to take a look from this angle and watch how long it takes to power up the lamp. And of course, the more repeaters you add, the longer this delay is going to be. So there we go. There is a quick example of the redstone repeaters. Let's move along to the next items, which are the dropper and the hopper. No, not the hopper. The dropper and the dispenser. A little bit of a difference here. We'll go ahead and get into that, but they both look like frogs on stone, which is pretty sweet. <laughs> so droppers and dispensers. What's the difference and what do they do? Well, these are the blocks themselves. Now, what they are able to do is very, very cool, and unlike anything 
else in the Minecraft universe. So I'll go ahead and show you guys. They basically have the power to dispense or get rid of blocks. And I'll show you exactly what I mean. First off, we'll just do a normal block. So this is where we're going to be able to see there's not much of a difference between them. Um, you're basically just going to add your items into the interface and uh, power them up. And they will be able to shoot out the items. Oh, and that's actually going to power both. Oh, perfect. Look at that. So there we go, you can see both of them shoot out the block that is inside, and it will continue to do that until it runs out of ammunition, which should happen sooner or later. Yeah, there we go, and now it's out. So that's the basic gist of it, but a few of these, well, a few of these items are going to have a little bit of a different effect. Let's go ahead and check out the egg inside of both of these. So we'll go ahead and put a few eggs in the dispenser, and a few eggs inside of the hopper. Or not the hopper, the dropper. Now keep in mind, the dropper is the frog with a smiley face, the dispenser is the frog with a circle face. So that's that. Let's take a look at what happens when I hit this power with a different type of item. This is an actual usable item. Item. So what the difference is here is the dropper is just dropping the actual item itself The dispenser is using the item and throwing the egg really far and trying to break it as if I would if I just did that So that's basically what it's doing and yes, it can actually hatch a chick sometimes I don't see it working, but um, yeah, that's a difference It also works with things like potions and arrows if you want to set up traps. So basically um, long story short, if you're trying to make an arrow trap, do not use a dropper because it'll just fall out <laughs> and it won't actually do any damage. So we'll take a look and the potion, as you can see, is going to um, shoot out of the dropper. Uh, no, drop out of the dropper and shoot out of the dispenser. So that's the basic difference between those two. Now, how do you craft them, you say? Well, it's fairly simple. You just need a little bit of redstone, actually one for each, and then a lot of cobblestone, and uh, yeah, that's that. So the dispenser is going to look a little bit different. This is the dispenser right here. Here, there we are. It's going to have the bow inside, hence the shooting ability. The dropper is just going to be exactly the same without the bow, and uh, it's a little bit easier to craft. So there we go. Those are those two blocks. Let's move on to the slime blocks. So next up on the list, we have my favorite new block, the slime block. This is what it looks like. It's a little bit translucent. It's a pretty cool. It's a nice lime green, but basically what it is, it is a trampoline block, and it'll send you back, bouncing up a pretty good percentage of your height as every time you land land on it. So it's it's just like a trampoline in that way. So if I jump down onto this block and I missed it, uh, that yep, that was bad. That was embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> let's hope for better this time. Let's jump and let's land on it. There we go. As you can clearly see, it's just like a trampoline. I'm going to jump up and up a little bit, uh, a little bit less every time I land on it. So it'd be really, really useful for parkour, and it's, it's just a lot of fun. It's, it's so much fun to mess around with. So how do you craft this block? Well, all you need is slimes, and you got to kill them up and grab the balls they drop, slime balls, and then go ahead and basically craft them as you would any other ore block or whatever, and uh, make a few here. So I have seven, so why not make a little bit of a trampoline style thing. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. We'll see, what we, we'll see what we can have some fun with on that. <laughs> I got a cannonball? Yes. And then we'll jump around and as you can clearly see it, it works great. It works wonders. And the higher you go, the higher up your bounce will be. So it's pretty fun and I definitely want to have one of these in my survival world sooner or later. But those are slime blocks. Moving on, we have comparators which are easily the most confusing redstone contraptions I've ever seen in my life. Basically, comparators are like repeaters, except they have two torches on the back, and it's kind of similar, but not too similar. So here's an example of a comparator in action. Uh, it's got a signal coming from the right, and this is very technical. I'm not going to get into all the uses for this because it is super confusing, but basically, if the signal on the right or coming from the side of the comparator is less than the signal coming from the top or the back, whatever you're kind of looking, whatever direction you're looking at it, um, it's not going to power uh, through the front. But if if the signal on the back is stronger, or no, if the signal on the side is stronger than the signal on the front, it's actually going to power up the, the block and from the back. It's, oh my goodness, it's so confusing. <laughs> so as a recap, the side uh, the side power makes a huge difference. If, if the power from the side is less than the power from the front, you are not going to continue the signal. But if the power from the side is greater than the front, you will continue the signal. And another thing, it has a different mode. If you click on it, it's going to change to subtraction mode. So basically, it's going to power one block here because I have three from the side and two from the top. So three minus two is one, and only one of these is being powered. So if I were to move the lamp a little bit closer, you will see that it will be powered on. Very confusing, 
not too useful. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I will never actually use this unless I'm trying to copy something online and they say to place one down. Other than that, I don't think I will ever use one of these. But they also have a pretty other, uh, an easier to understand feature that I'll show right now. Over here, that's 360 around, and it is the, I don't know what you call it, it's the capacity reader, I'm not too sure, but if you basically uh, fill up a chest with items, so let's say I have um, no items in here, the uh, the comparator is going to turn off, but if I put an item inside of the chest, let's say I just put these three items in here, the comparator will get a little bit of power, and it's going to get a power uh, in proportion to how much of the container is filled, so as you can see here, with only three items, it's not a strong signal at all, but with a total of a whole bunch of items, the signal is a little bit stronger. Also, I thought it would be pretty, pretty, pretty cool to mention that uh, if you jump on top of the, of the chest, it's actually going to turn off the signal, which is kind of weird. I guess it's just because you can't open it when you're on top of it. Not too sure, but uh, I thought that was pretty sweet. So yeah, you can use chests to create a redstone source of power. Pretty cool stuff. <laughs> Other than that, that is basically it. Those were all of the redstone additions. And if I miss anything, please do let me know, but I'm pretty sure that about sums it up for 0.14.0. So hopefully you found this video helpful, and if you did, please go ahead and smash that like button below. This is in no way supposed to be a redstone end-all, be-all tutorial, but it was supposed to be a nice Nice little guide for beginners like me, because I am no, I am in no way a redstone master, as I said. Thanks so much, guys. Hopefully you all enjoyed, and hopefully you learned something new today. Um, and also, if you have any suggestions on other videos to do uh, regarding guide topics, please do let me know in the comment section below, or on Twitter, or however else you see fit. Thanks so much, guys. And as always, stay frosty, my friends. Peace, guys. See ya. Bye-bye.